Nada Signal Shark, a short introduction. After power on, Signal Shark usually starts with the same setting as it was active when it was powered off. To get a defined starting situation for our exercise, we first open a new task with default settings. To do this, we click on the Edit field next to the Task tabs and then activate the Add Task function. SignalShark basically knows three operation modes – Auto DF, Real-Time Spectrum and Spectrum. We have to choose between these three modes for each new task. Auto DF allows automatic direction finding with ADFA antennas. Real-Time Spectrum allows the use of the real-time behavior of the analyzer up to a span of 40 MHz. In the Spectrum mode, you can use the span up to the maximum frequency limits of the analyzer, but then it is no longer in real-time mode. In this menu, you can also find other factory predefined tasks as well as access to self-defined setups. Let's activate the task Real-Time Spectrum. An additional tab with the name Real-Time Spectrum is added. Now we have to define the display of the results. The view spectrum is already selected, therefore it's grayed out on the right in the selection menu of the possible view options. If we now want to additionally activate the spectrogram view, we click on the corresponding field. Now we have to define where the spectrogram should be placed. Above, below, to the right, or to the left of the existing spectrum. This time let's place it below the spectrum view by simply clicking on the lower field. Now we see a preview of the views. We can add more, delete again and so on. In the upper right corner of the display the title of the current menu is shown, but this area also serves as a return function to return to the next higher menu. Now we are back in the Tasks menu and already see the measured values now in two different displays. Another click on the upper right corner leads us to the main menu. If we now want to move the frequency range to be measured, for example to measure the FM band, we can do this using the input function for the frequency. But it is even more elegant to move the frequency range with the finger. To do this, Touch the value scale of the frequency axis and simply move it to the desired position. If you touch the screen in the area of the displayed measured value, you can define a zoom window by moving from left to right. If you lift your finger, the zoom is executed. If you move your finger from right to left, this corresponds to a zoom out. The center frequency is held, the span is doubled. If you want to optimize the amplitude display, simply click on the double arrow in the lower left corner of the spectrum display. The size ratio of the views to each other can be shifted simply by touching the marker between the views. If you want a view to quickly use the entire screen for the display, there is a button in the upper right corner of each view that can be used to switch an exclusive display on and off. Finally, let's take a look to the other fields of the display. At the top left of the field we get information such as date, battery charge status, etc. A click into this field leads us to further information. There are no setting options here. A click back takes us back to the main menu. And the next field, the gear wheel, leads us to the general settings of the analyzer. And back. You may have noticed the smaller triangle in the lower right corner. This indicates there is another submenu here. This is also true for the field to the right. This is the access to the stored measurement results and setups. Here the stored results can be recalled and reviewed. 
The icon of the floppy disk stands for saving the measurement results. The camera for a screenshot. Followed by a very powerful undo redo function. With the run button you stop the measurement. With the S run function you can stop the analyzer automatically after a definable number of measurements. This is followed by the marker menu. Optionally write of it the field to execute Python scripts directly from the application. In the hamburger menu you will find the setting options for the volume, an access to define the views in the current task, a preset function and the access to the help function. The right side of the display houses the soft keys of the menus. It is very important to note that this menu is linked to the current active view. The currently active view is marked by a blue frame. If you want to activate and set another view, you simply click once in the view. You will see how a soft key toggles between detector and traces when you change the active view. If you additionally activate, for example, the map view, the difference becomes even more obvious. The map specific settings can only be reached if the map view is also the active view. The button line of the screen is used to display the most important parameters of the currently active view. Now enjoy Nada Signal Shark!